Blue Prism is a very important alliance partner for IBM. Uh, I lead uh, IBM automation in Europe. Our job is to help clients um, engineer out unnecessary human intervention if it isn't adding value to their customers or protecting their institution. And what robotic process automation through Blue Prism allows us to do is to look at all of those repetitive tasks in middle and back office and combine that with our port rich portfolio of technologies around AI, around integration that allow us to look at a process end to end with Blue Prism at a core part of that to uh, engineer out those things that are involving a lot of people doing work that they'd really rather not do. I think there isn't a day that passes by when I don't see an article about robots, AI, or robotic process automation. And uh, my agenda is full of uh, conferences and meetings with clients. Um, and the reality is, compared with a year ago, uh, people accept and, and understand what Blue Prism is about. They understand the concept, by and large, of robotic process automation. Over the last year, I think 70% of organizations have had proof of concepts. Uh, perhaps only 3 or 4 or 5% have actually moved forward to any scale. So the conversations I'm having are about, well, we've, we've played with it. We've kind of may have achieved something of a business case, in many cases not. But we buy into the concept of how do we scale. And so what we're doing uh, in partnership uh, with, uh, with Blue Prism in many clients is to, uh, is to help address that problem. It's really interesting when you look at the rollout of some of the next generation um, you know, applications. Um, some might think that um, RPA uh, is, is really about legacy. The reality is that many of the new applications, uh, you know, whether it's SAP, Oracle, wherever it is, uh, are, um, are being, they're still being implemented, uh, surrounded by a lot of, lot of old technology. And so there's a massive opportunity to use automation around some of these new, uh, new the rollouts of the latest technologies. So clients that are thinking that um, robotic process automation is the answer to uh, competitive advantage and transformation are getting it wrong. The, the reality is um, that uh, the driving that, that competitive advantage requires a full toolbox. So if you think of, you know, the analogy I use is, um, is perhaps a plumber who, t who turns up at your house and he's got a toolbox and uh, he's got a hammer and a wrench in there. Uh, there's only so much that he's going to be able to do. Uh, what IBM and Blue Prism bring is a full toolbox. So IBM has a portfolio of, of uh, Watson AI solutions that will allow you to um, uh, understand in an automated fashion what's happening within a document, within a PDF, within an email. Uh, we, through our you know, Watson conversation, are able to um, uh, have, a, have an automated conversation with the client and extract intent. Now, what we can, once we understand and apply an, an algorithm, a decision to that, uh, that, that, that process, we can then call APIs or uh, microservices or you know, use you know, in, in investments the clients already made in straight through processing. But there's a whole raft of processes and applications that can now be accessed using Blue Prism and robotic process automation. So you can start to look at uh, you know, a f automation of, um, of, of departments, of customer journeys in a new way. And, and, and in doing so, that really starts to push true transformation, which not only addresses you know, productivity and cost, but uh, you know, rapidly accelerates the process for, the, for execution for the client and reduces significantly error rates and, and operational risks. So win-win all around, and people get to focus on the things they really want to do. I think there's a change going on with the C-suite. Uh, actually. Um, last year, um, they were very focused on uh, robotic process automation, getting very excited about it. I, th I think the C-suite are coming to understand that there is a, um, you know, that we are at an inflection point and the opportunities for automation are absolutely there. Uh, and they're expecting the CIO and the businesses to go, go off and execute that. I think the boards are now starting to talk about something different, which is, uh, which is about people 
and not about robots. It's about what's the future of my workforce? You know, how are people going to transition from an environment where they're spending a lot of their day doing repetitive tasks and, uh, and they're going to move to higher value work? Absolutely augmented by you know, IBM Watson, as an example, uh, in, in, in that work. Uh, and, and, and how are they going to manage that trans transition? How do they engage their workforce in it? And, and so a lot of the conversation at the very top of organizations is actually about people. Um, and uh, for uh, business leaders who are then executing their, their, for, for their budgets and, and plans for the next 18 months, that's a different conversation. That you know, is, is all, really all about enterprise automation. How do we scale and move rapidly to execute the technology? Uh, and again, the kind of link, linking the two, they're often forgetting the people agenda. So uh, they, that, that's a piece of connecting that needs to happen. The business case is the big question, right? So, um, so there's a lot of early work and people disappointed with their business cases out there in the marketplace. And it comes back to my point about um, uh, a very structured uh, and engineered way in which you do process analysis and, uh, and create a prioritized list of processes to go into your automation uh, capability, right? So we focus a lot of time and attention getting that right. Now, that prioritization, it depends on the lens you're putting to it. So if the lens is uh, in my automation toolkit, I've got a, um, I'm j just using RPA, then uh, you've really got to focus on um, uh, processes which um, are, are highly structured and, uh, and basically involving a lot of key. So absolutely, you can drive very significant benefits, 30, 40%. I mean, it depends on how much of that's going on in a process. So um, I, I, I'm much more interested, and really where the answer lies is, is this idea of you know, using RPA as one of your tools, right? So the, the, the answer to productivity gains of 50, 60%, which absolutely you know, can be achieved, you know, require, require um, more holistic thinking. So, so, for example, I've got a, a number of clients where, uh, although historically been lean organizations, when we've taken um, Simpler, which is a, a subsidiary of IBM, and done a thorough lean analysis of the processes, then there's as much benefit of doing proper lean to clean out, simplify the process, as there is in the automation. And in combination, that approach, for example, with one client in their finance and HR processes um, is, is, is evidencing 60%. So there's a lot of focus on um, financial services and energy utilities tech, uh, uh, and, and uh, the telco businesses, uh, and they've been pioneers. Um, but the reality is there isn't a, a, a role, a job, an activity in any organization which won't either be uh, automated or augmented in some way. So there's no escaping. Every industry over the next kind of five years, 10 years, probably five years, is going to be transformed. So clearly there's huge swathes of um, the public sector, uh, of the media industry, which we're doing a lot of work in, uh, and opportunities for automation. Uh, so I think we're all going to see it, and it's going to affect both our work lives, our workplace, uh, but also how we interact with organizations that provide services to us as individuals. So there's a huge synergy between uh, RPA and, um, uh, and AI and, and uh, IBM Watson. And actually, if I think back to the last 12 months, um, clients have come to, come to me and come to my team because they've read about Blue Prism. They might have even experimented with Blue Prism, often with other suppliers, which is fine. And they come to us because RPA can only go so far. You know, if, if, if in a process you've got to make a decision or read a document or have a conversation or recognize a pattern in a photograph, actually RPA can't do that, right? So the AI solution, uh, Watson, IBM, can, can achieve that and uh, make a decision and then have RPA execute a transaction behind it. So uh, I, I actually think that RPA uh, extends the... Um, the practicality and usability of, uh, of our AI solutions. Great.
So I think our, our partnership is critical to um, uh, innov innovation and transformation within our clients. And the reason I say that is, um, it, is um, a lot of my clients are really focusing on customer journeys uh, to, as the, as the um, guiding light for how they're going to transform their organisations. So what IBM brings is the ability to help clients uh, reimagine their processes, reimagine their customer journeys by bringing a combination of design thinking and um, our, re our lean reinvented process, which is uh, lean updated for the digital age, right? So th th that approach allows us to both do re reinvention, so we're not actually going through an automation of a broken old process, but actually looking to provide automation to something which is future proof as far as that can be achieved, right? Um, and a business case that, uh, based upon lean principles, which is a massively simplified process, actually ensuring that that customer journey is delivered without, with, with the minimum, minimum necessary human intervention uh, to, to achieve what the customer wants. And then behind that, we've got Blue Prism to pick up uh, the automation through RPA. Uh, but IBM then brings in AI, enterprise content management, OCR, you know, our partnerships with SAP, Oracle, um, to provide a portfolio of, of tools that actually we can really optimize uh, and, and beautify, if you like, that, 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 uh, the engineering around that customer experience. The future of work will be very different. So let, let's firstly think about what's happening. So the, the kind of key message is, if you can make a decision in less than a second, then I can automate it. Technology exists to do that, including reading documents, photographs, having conversations. I can also do that. So what that means, the future of work are those decisions and that activity which is associated with decisions that take more than a second. So those are going to be associated with, you know, work's going to be associated with judgment, creativity, innovation, and empathy. Those are the key facets of work going forward. Now, what does that mean? So if, if all of the mundane work has gone and your day is spent doing, you know, really working with your customers, I think we'll see organizations which are in a very different shape. I think we'll see organizations which today are 15 layers of management reduced to four or five. I think we won't be working in call centers in, in ranks. We'll be working round tables, working in teams, collaborating around problems. And we'll have AI solutions which are, um, which are uh, engaging you with the information you need at the point of your contact with customers so you can make the right judgment call. So I think it'll be a much more vibrant, more collaborative, more engaging uh, uh, world in which uh, young people can, um, you know, will, will, will be able to enjoy new careers. And I think it's also uh, interesting to note that we're in a transition. Uh, my baby boomer generation is retiring. Uh, the new generation of millennials is with us. And, and what they want is, you know, demanding work, challenging work, coaching, mentoring, you know, regular promotions, uh, doing work that actually they can go home and be proud of. And I think this new environment you know, with robotic process automation and Blue Prism and IBM's Watson is heralding that workplace that is be just right for them.